Managing orthopedic injuries in multiple trauma patients. Managing orthopedic injuries in multiple trauma patients is a challenge. So you probably would have a patient that is unstable. That patient will have multiple orthopedic problems and the physician must manage these complex problems adequately. And this may not be easy. So the patient will come with different varieties of injuries. And I'm going to talk about the important ones. The patients will come with a hip or knee dislocation, open fractures, humerus and forearm fractures, tension pneumothorax, pelvic fracture and bleeding, head injury, hemorrhage, scabrothoracic dissociation, femur fractures, and hypoperfusion. So if you find in the question there is a hip or knee dislocation, you must do urgent close reduction. So the question can come, the patient has high ISS score, then the patient also have a hip dislocation and got multiple fractures. You start by doing close reduction of the hip. If you find a fracture that's open, you will give antibiotics immediately. And if the patient is going to the operating room, you will do debridement. If you find fractures of the humerus and the forearm, then you will probably do splinting for these fractures initially, followed by surgery later on when the patient is stable. If you find tension pneumothorax, you probably will need chest tube. You may start by inserting a needle at the second intercostal space midclavicular line, followed by insertion of a chest tube. If you have a patient with a pelvic fracture and bleeding, then you will do transfusion in the ratio of 1 to 1 to 1, blood, fresh frozen plasma, and platelets. If you have an unstable patient with a pelvic fracture because of bleeding and the patient has an open book fracture as seen in the x-ray or clinically, like when you see a scrotal hematoma and the legs are externally rotated, then you will need to close the book by placing a pelvic binder around the pelvis. The anteroposterior type 3 pelvic fracture bleeds a lot and it requires a lot of blood transfusion and is associated with significant abdominal trauma and shock. So if you have a pelvic fracture and the patient in shock, you need to resuscitate the patient, transfuse the patient, one to one to one ratio. So if it is an open book fracture of the pelvis, they bleed a lot. You need to close the book by a pelvic binder and add skeletal traction if there is a vertical shear component. If the patient has a lateral compression fracture and the patient is unstable, look for other source of bleeding. Lateral compression fracture does not cause a lot of bleeding. Lateral compression fracture may also be associated with head injury or chest injury. How about the head injury? Monitor the patient and maintain the cerebral perfusion. It's not advisable to do definitive surgery. At that point, the concern will be that the patient may go into episodic intraoperative hypotension. Hemorrhage. When you have a patient that is bleeding and the blood pressure starts getting affected, then that patient in class 3 hemorrhage. If the patient is hypotensive and in class 3 shock, you will start resuscitation with 2 liters of crystalloid fluid and have blood available for the patient. The class 4 hemorrhage, you will have confusion, hypotension and rapid heart rate and narrow pulse pressure.
Class 4 is a life-threatening situation and you need to do rapid blood transfusion. If you find unstable patient with a pelvic fracture with a class 4 hemorrhage, then you will need to resuscitate the patient and give the patient blood transfusion. You will give O negative blood. There is no time for type and cross match blood. You will give the patient a pelvic binder to decrease the pelvic volume. The mortality rate in pelvic fractures correlate with shock on presentation. Shock due to hemorrhage could be reversible. What is compensated shock? In compensated shock, the patient has a low blood volume, but the patient is still able to maintain blood pressure and organ perfusion by increasing the heart rate and constricting the blood vessels. In decompensated shock, the body is unable to keep up with the loss of blood. The scabulothoracic dissociation is a significant injury. It's like closed four-quarter amputation where the scapula and the upper extremity moves laterally, like disconnected from the chest, and there can be neurovascular deficit involved with this injury with possible disruption of one of the major vessels of the upper extremity. You need to apply the ATLS protocol and the functional outcome of the patient depend on the neurovascular status of the patient. Femur fractures. If the patient condition is bad before surgery, or if the patient condition is bad during surgery, you're going to do external fixture for the femurs, especially if it is bilateral. When we talk about fracture femur, in the operating room, patient becomes unstable and hypoxia, resuscitate, and use external fixtures. You only do IM rotting of the femur after normalizing the lactate levels and the base deficit. Be aware of the residual hypoperfusion. Use external fixtures in this situation. You will do damage control if the levels of lactic acid and base deficit are high. In damage control, you will choose a technique that can be performed rapidly and consistently with minimal blood loss. Arm rod of the femur should not be done when the patient is not fully resuscitated. Hypoperfusion. The problem is when the patient is unstable, before surgery or during surgery. Before surgery, you need to get the lactic acid level and you need to find out about the base deficit and you will do damage control if the lactic acid level is high or if the base deficit is great. If the condition is bad during surgery, like the patient is unstable, patient have hypotension and hypoxia, then you need to resuscitate and use external fixtures, no definitive surgery. You will use external fixer. You will do the minimum. You will delay definitive surgery initially. You will not use the IM rods and do not do a big surgery. What is the story of the serum lactate level? The serum lactate level is used to evaluate the effectiveness of resuscitation and if the patient is fully resuscitated or not. If the serum lactate level is greater than 2.5, then the patient could be in hypoperfusion status, which can be occult, and the patient is then at increased risk of preoperative complication such as death, ARDS, and organ failure. And if the serum lactate level is less than 2.5, then the patient is fully resuscitated and the perioperative complication will be less following definitive stabilization of long bone fractures. So in the first scenario, when the serum lactate level is more than 2.5, you're going to do external fixtures. 
In the second scenario, when it is less than 2.5, it can do iron rods. Do not do definitive surgical fixation of the fracture before you correct the hypoperfusion. Be aware that the vital signs such as blood pressure, cardiac output, hemoglobin and hematocrit, urine output are all not good criteria to identify if the patient is fully resuscitated or not, if the patient is in shock or not, and if the patient has adequate tissue perfusion or not. The full resuscitation occurs when the resolution of the shock and there is tissue oxygenation and when the tissue acidosis is eliminated and the aerobic metabolism is restarted. We like the aerobic metabolism. We don't like the anaerobic metabolism that leads to pyruvate and lactic acid. As you can see here, the lactic acid is a byproduct of an anaerobic metabolism. It is a metabolism without oxygen. Normally, the cells produce energy by breaking down the glucose, and the cells use oxygen to do that. If the body does not have oxygen, then it converts the metabolism to an anaerobic metabolism, and the end product of this is lactic acid. Because of tissue ischemia, the body is acidotic and the pH drops. And the bicarb is used up to buffer the acidotic situation of the patient that creates a base deficit. The risk of death, ARDS, and multiple organ failure is increased. The base deficit is a direct measure of metabolic acidosis and the indirect measure of blood lactate level. So normalization of the standard hemodynamic parameters such as the blood pressure, the heart rate, and the urine output is not adequate to tell if the patient is fully resuscitated or not. The lactic acid and the base deficit are better parameters to indicate if the patient is fully resuscitated. So if it is high, don't do the big surgery. If it is low, you can do the iron rods. It is the best information that will guide you for the scope of treatment of the patient. Unless you have these data about the level of lactic acid and base deficit, you cannot tell if the patient is fully resuscitated or not. Thank you very much. I hope that was helpful.